Hi everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much everyone for being with us. Thank you so much for your patience. Yes. Hi. I hope that you can see me clearly. Don't look at the background here. Yeah? It happens sometime. Yes. So how are you all? First of all, tell me how are you all? Oh, I was just reading your comments before I joined the session. Yes. Yes, it's so good to see you all here. Very good everyone. Yes. Please write in the chat box if you can see me clearly and if you can hear me clearly. We, unfortunately, we had some tech issues and we are just almost like we are there. We will be fixing it in a while so that we we all can study our environment. Because the topic we have our environment and we seems like we are here. How many of you actually like the topic our environment? It's really very easy. Super easy topic from the, you know, all of the bio part that we have in class 10th. Yes? Yeah, yes, good evening. Thank you, Nikesh. Yeah, I'm perfectly audible and visible. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yes, it's a very interesting chapter. You know, it's super interesting. And you know, the good thing about this chapter is that we can actually prepare this chapter in just half an hour. And you can actually, you know, have a thought that, okay, there are only two important topics or three important topics from this particular chapter. And these are kind of sure shot that will be coming in your examination. And mostly, uh, like out of those all marks, this particular chapter, you know, you will have three or four marks questions. Yeah. We're so sure about this. Why there's totally black? Yeah, black is my favorite color. <laughs> so I thought that we always have that slide, right? Let's start with something new. Now, now talking about the environment, right? A very basic question. I'm sure all of us have studied it. If we switch off the light, what you will see? Yes, if you just imagine if there's no light, what is a... Can you see something? Yes? You have convex lens. Yeah, from bio, we are going to into physics. Yes. Five minutes. <laughs> Just one minute. It's taking some time. <laughs> yes. So we have all the tech people over there. Just all are sweating. We are doing our best. You have revised everything. That's super amazing. That's very good. Okay. We don't have Mendy today, but we have definitely a very cool session with us, right? And uh, we will definitely, just quickly, we'll start with the session, right? So just give me a few minutes. We are trying to fix it. It's a very easy, easy chapter, right? I think we can actually study this chapter without the slides, you know? What do you think? Of course, along with your help, we can do that, right? But before that, let's go back to our previous video and let's just quickly take the names of the homeworks rockstar right same yes so uh let me discuss about our environment chapter it's really very important right as we have already mentioned and before we begin with this particular chapter let's quickly look at the names right of those students who have actually answered the questions and let's quickly take the names and let's quickly clap for each one of them. We have Charvi, Prakar, we have Nikki, Shraddha. Thank you, Aditi. We have uh, Bhagya. We have Nik uh, Nikesh. We have Gungun, Sakshi, Deepshika. Very good. Okay. So now that we have, congratulate each. Co oh, yeah, congratulations to homework rockers. Very good, everyone. Yeah, we will be having homework today, right? Okay, claps, Ta -da 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 -da. claps, okay. Now, let's start with a very important session, right? We are discussing about the environment. Now, what is a one beautiful thing about, uh, you know, about our environment? Can you tell me? When we talk about our environment, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? What our environment comprises of? Yes, uh, very good. 
Ishaget Khan. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correct, but yeah. Yes. I can see the answers. Yes, we have that, you know, we have living organisms and non-living organisms, right? The living components and the living components. So we talk about, right, we have two important components. We have the living components and the non-living components, right? What are the living components we have? All of us, right? You and me, all the microorganisms, all the plants, all the animals, right, are the living components. Whereas we have the non-living components like table, chair, not the table chair, the air, rock, water, all of this are the non-living components. And when these two components interact with each other, right, we have something really very special. We cannot live without water, air, etc, etc, right? So there's an interaction of these two components, biotic and the abiotic components. Agree, right? All of us will agree on that. Pizza, burger, yes. Very good. Yeah, the living and the non-living components, biotic and the abiotic components. Very good. Hi, Sanskriti. I can see lots of her. Very good. So I can see thumbs up from Fennel, Vidushi, Luna. Then we have Saranj. We have, yes, Bhagya, Disha, Yashasvi, Ram. Very good. Kibad. <laughs> Absolutely correct. Okay. Few seconds more and I think we'll be back on our normal track, right? So, so now that we are clear that we have in our environment, we have two important components. We have the biotic components and the abiotic components. Apart from that, when we think of, right, when they do interact, they form a very good system, right? It starts with E. Can anyone tell me what is it? It's really very easy, right? It's super easy. We have some system, right, where there's an interaction of the living and the non-living components. I can see the answers. It's ecosystem. Very good, everyone. And yeah, just give me a few minutes. A few seconds, actually, and we will be, we'll be back with our green slides. Yeah, here we go. And yeah. So we have this information with us, right? So we have the ecosystem. And an ecosystem will see the interaction of the uh, interaction of the biotic and the abiotic components, right? Screen hai pe hai. See? The moment I say screen nahi pe hai aur aa gayi. Yes, so we are back officially. Yes, you can see the green screen. And we should actually clap for the team. I want to see a claps over there in the chat box. Because we have so many people here who are working really very hard. Yes, the screen is visible now. Yay! Let's have a clap everyone. Or a smiley. Oh, very good. Yeah, the screen listens to ma'am. Yes, I think it listens to all of us. Very good. Okay. Now that we are back over here, right, and we are aware about the ecosystem, let's quickly discuss about the further important topics, right? So these are the two important topics that can easily be asked in the examination. What is the environment and what is the ecosystem? Okay. Now let's start with it, everyone. Over here, I can scribble and I can see that, yeah, it's active. So, over here, I'm sure you have seen these beautiful newspapers. And, of course, in the newspapers, the one thing that we usually see is about our environment. Do you pledge to save your environment? Of course, the environment. And all of this is really very environment friendly or something. We say, oh, this is really very environment friendly. We are environmental warriors, right? We do all of that. So, of course, let's quickly recap what we have just studied. We have the biotic components like humans, animals, microorganisms, and plants. And then we have the non-living or the abiotic components. We have these. So if we have to sum up what environment is, over here we can say the environment is the sum total of all living and non-living factors that surround an orga or organism. Super easy. You can take a screenshot of it, right? If someone asks you to write the definition of environment, you have it over here. Then... If we move ahead in, in ecosystem, as we have already discussed that, we have biotic and abiotic components. These are living and the non-living components. And we have over here, an ecosystem is the structural or the functional unit of nature which comprise of the interaction between biotic and abiotic components. Easy. 
So we are there with it, right? Amazing slide, right? Let's congratulate the team also who have worked really very hard on the slides. So Kvinder, I think you're asking me something. I'm sorry. Yeah, the screen is a little bit far, like, you know, it's kind of... So I might come and close and see, right? So uh, you can write the answers, or sorry, the question in the chat box. So Kvinder, can you write your question again? I think I've missed your question. Weightage of this chapter. So when we talk about the weightage for this particular chapter in terms of the, you know, if you have the genetics and other, from this particular chapter, you might, most probably, you'll be getting four marks for sure, right? And one or two marks here and there. So I think that answers. So Pindar have answered the weightage for this particular chapter. Yes? Awesome. Right, everyone? So we have the weightage of the chapter. We have, we know that it's really very really easy, peasy chapter. So let's quickly finish this chapter, right? So we are clear about what environment is and what ecosystem is. When we talk about the ecosystem, now I'm sure in the 8th standard, I can see many of you, uh, not many of you, but I think here are a few of you who are there in 8th standard. Now in 8th standard, we have different types of ecosystems. So can you tell me? There are like natural ecosystem and artificial ecosystem. Can you write the examples of it? It's a Kaju Katli chapter, Papia. Absolutely. Right? It's really, very sweet and really, very easy to eat and digest it and goes into our mind. Yes. Five marks. Forest, yeah. Forest is what? Forest is a natural ecosystem. Very good. We have forest, mountain are natural. Very good. Aquatic is artificial. Amazing. So you have the clarity. So over here, let's quickly discuss about it. We have the natural ecosystem, which of course has forest, grassland and desert. And when we talk about the artificial, we have gardens, zoos and farmland. And why is that? Of course, because over here, it's there, right? It can, uh, it have the interaction by themselves. And of course, in the artificial ecosystem, we are there. We are the mediator over there, getting the animals, the plants at a one particular place and then only the interaction will start. So over here, we have the hands, right? The hands of the humans. And of course, it's an artificial ecosystem. Very good, yes. Very good. I can see the correct answer over here. Now that we are clear with this, let's jump to one of the easiest topic. Now you can actually note down all the important topics that we are discussing and we can do it in like half an hour or so. The next important topic is related with the food. So can you tell me what will be the topic name? Food. There's a linear, ch uh, I'll not say the word. There's a linear sequence, right, in which one organism will be consuming the other, right? Very good. Yes, very good. I can see the answers. It's food chain. Absolutely correct. So the next topic that we're discussing is a food chain. Now, of course, over here we have, like we go from the down, we have the plants, we have the grasshopper, frog, snake, and of course over here, eagle, right? So it's a, it's a beautiful food chain. What we have over here, we have the producers, which are the plants, because they make their own food. Then we have the primary consumers, which are the herbivores, right? They will be only consuming the plants. We have secondary consumer, carnivores, which will be eating the meat of other animals. We have then the tertiary consumers. Again, these are the carnivores. It will be consuming the frog over here in this particular case of the example. And we have the top, we have the top carnivores, right? And it will be consuming the snake. So the sequence of the transfer from matter and energy in a form of food from one organism to another is a food chain. Simple. Yes? It can be hawk, yeah. Hawk or eagle, yeah. Or maybe kite also, right? Yes? Very good. So are we clear with the food chain? Because it's a very important question, right? We should be aware about what food chain is. So we are clear what the food chain is. Yes, we will be discussing about it. Swapna will be discussing about the biological magnification. It's a really very important topic, so we'll be doing that. Just wait for some time. Uh, yes, we can say that, but humans are not the top consumers in each and every food chain. We have a certain foundation, right? We cannot go into the deep dive of the ocean, and of course, right? We cannot, we'll not be able to consume there. So yeah, we are not the top consumer in all the food chain. But in some, we are omnivores, right? Yes. So are we clear with the food chain? 
Now, when we talk about the food chain, right, we have these all. We have the carnivores. But after that also, we have a very important component that plays a very important role in the whole process of the food chain. But yet, they are not the part of food chain. Can you write about we, which organism I'm talking about? Yes? They are really very important and they are really very really tiny, right? But they are not a part of a food chain. Yes, yes, yes. I want to see the answers. Yes, I think the chat has got the chat got struck over here. So give me a minute. Yes. So what do you think? What is the reason? Um, you know, what are these organisms we are talking about? Yes, very good. I can see over here. It's the decomposers, right? So they are not the part of the food chain directly, right? They're not the part of the food chain, but they are the one that will be decomposing all of these animals after their death, right? So, they are the decomposers and they actually help in breaking down these whole animals into the simple molecules, right? That can be easily mixed in the soil, right? That's how these decomposers play a very important role. Very good. Very good, very good. So, we have the answer that is the decomposers. A very important question that why the decomposers are not there in the food chain, over here we have. Now, let's quickly look at the, some of the other examples of food chain over here we have. We have... The aquatic food chain over here, we have the water plants, we have the shrimp, frog, fish, and the duck. If you look at the fish closely, you know, at the very first time when I saw this fish, it looked like the fish is smiling. Yeah? Yes. What is going on? We are discussing about our environment chapter of class 10. Very good. Yeah, fungi and parasites. We have bacteria, right, which plays a very important role in the decomposition process. Absolutely correct. They are they actually help in cleaning the dead and decay matter. Very good. So over here we have a food chain. Then of course a food chain related with the humans. We have the plants. We have the chicken over here and the humans. Okay. So over here we have. Now let's move ahead. Yeah. Yes. Now let's uh, try to move ahead with a very <laughs> yeah definitely she's I think fish is really very happy to be a part of the food chain yes okay now let's move uh, from the food chain again and now I'm telling you that this topic is absolutely important all of you all of you I want all of your attention over here in the class right now because this is the important topic it's kind of sure short question that will be coming in your examination and that is in the relation with the energy. So now we'll be discussing about the energy flow in food chain. So we know that we have the food chain, right? And we know that the one organism will be eating the other organism. And that's how we will see the movement of the mass and the energy, right? So when we have the sun over here, we know that this plays a very important role because plants will be utilizing the sunlight to make their own food. And of course, hence the other animals will be consuming it. And that's how the things move. But when we say that, we can definitely say that that energy flows is a straight line in the food chain. So, energy will be flowing in a straight line in a, any food chain. Over here we have this. Now let's talk about the energy flow and the energy loss. So for example, I will be consuming a lot of food and I will be doing a lot of activities. So what will be happening? That's very good, Aman. Zooplanktons. Tiny, tiny organisms we have in the water, like the, in the aquatic system. Yes? Planktons, planktons are the small plants, right? Small plants that are there in the aquatic system. Zooplankton, small, tiny animals that are there. Yes. Very good. So over here, we'll be spending the energy. So of course, we'll be losing it. Right? And of course, we have this that only the 10% of the energy will be getting transferred from one tropic level to the next. For example, if we have right over here, plant will be taking some and of course that's how only 10% of the energy will be moving forward. So basically, that's one of the easiest way to understand this. For example, you are sitting on a first bench, right, in your class and maybe let's just say that you have like five desks behind, just keeping a very short and you have an amazing chocolate, right, but your best friend sits at the last desk. And you just pass the chocolate during 
in the class. What will happen? Do you think that the students who are sitting there in between all of that will just leave the chocolate? What? It will be moving from one person to another. Definitely they will be taking a bite of it. And eventually by the time it will be reaching to your best friend, it will be really very less. Okay? So that's how the 10% energy law works. So as it moves from one tropic level to another tropic level, we will see the loss of energy. Right? Only 10% of the energy is being forwarded. Rest 90% will be, will be you know, getting lost during the various metabolic process which happens in the individual's body. Yes? Are we clear with it? Very good, Yashrat. Very good. Yes. Are we clear with it? Everyone? Ha. Huh. So, uh, Nikesh will be discussing about that. In which of the level did the most energy get lost? So, if you can see over here, if you have the numbers, definitely you can see, right? In which tropic level, you will see the maximum loss of the energy. The sun is giving this a lot. Sun is providing a good amount of energy to the plants. But from here to here, there's a huge loss, right? Basically, we're following the 10% law and that's how the things will be there. Yes, the first tropic level. Very good. Amazing. So are we clear with this? If this particular topic come in your, in your examination, you will be, I'm sure you will be okay with that. And I'm sure you will definitely write the answer in a proper way. Ma'am, can we put more than one organism? So when we're talking about the, uh, so over here, when we're discussing about a food chain, we will be putting them in the tropic level, right? We can, but when we talk about a food chain, we will have a simple straight line food chain, which comprise of one organism only. Very good. Okay, so that's what we have over here. We will see that the, the movement is happening from one tropic level to another. So we have the first tropic level, second, third and fourth. Now, as few of you have already mentioned over here, that we have different organisms which will be consuming different animals and a sim similar food chain, right? For example, if, uh, if there is a deer, right, in the forest, so deer is a food of uh, tiger also and lion also, right? So there are two food chains that can be formed, right? So let's discuss about that and we'll be discussing about the food web over here. So we have the plant, rabbit and wolf. And of course over here we have plants will be consumed by the deer also. And of course deer can be easily consumed by a leopard over here. And then plants will be consumed by the grasshopper or any other insect. Of course it can be easily consumed by the frog. Frog will be eaten by the snake and eventually peacock can eat the snake. Right? This lesson is a piece of cake. Yes, absolutely. So what happens at the saprotropic tropic level? So we are just, in saprotrops, we have those organisms which actually are the one that, you know, basically they are the ones that, that are consuming the dead and decay matter. So basically it ends over there. We have the decomposers over there. So I think I answered your question. Right, so what we have over here, we have the, we can see a lot of cross connection and that's a food web. So the interconnection of the various food chain is called as the food web. So are we clear everyone? Are we clear with it, right? So as of now, if we quickly look back and quickly revise, we have discussed about the environment, ecosystem, we have discussed about the food chain, energy law, and just now we have discussed about the food web. Yes? Sanskriti, can we focus on the class? Yes? After the class, you can have chats. Yes, Vikas. It's okay, Suhani. You can always go back to the session and see. Crystal clear. Very good, Gungun. I can see the crystal ball. Very good. You guys are really very innovative. Okay. Now let's move ahead to something like this, right? Now this is very interesting and this is super easy. I want you to teach me. So there's a word over here which, you know, which is that band, endosulfan. What do you think could be the reason for it? Is it really very toxic? Toxic? It's a deadly pesticide and of course it causes the brain damage. So that's why there's a ban on this. And more than that, so many deaths have happened because of that. So the question is if you and I are not consuming these 
toxins directly because we are so aware about it, right? That we should not be consuming any toxins, any sort of harmful material that can actually damage our body, right? But how all of this is getting into our body? Just think of it. I can see the answer already. As you all, you, you guys are really amazing. That this chapter is really very easy, right? So let's go directly to the point. Of course, we will be discussing that how do these toxins will be entering into the food chain? And of course, there are two ways for that. Of course, we have the pesticides and the fertilizers, and these are the harmful chemicals that we'll be discussing about. And what will happen, of course, happy farmer over here adding the fertilizers or the pesticides into the farm. What will happen? These chemicals will be going into the soil, right? And of course, will be absorbed by the plants. And once these plants will have these chemicals and if we have those plants, right? Of course, we are getting these chemicals in our body. And slowly, slowly, we'll see the accumulation of this, right? So that's a one way. Then the, there's another way and that is related to the water. So now pesticides or the fertilizer can each easily leach into the water bodies. They can just flow into the water bodies. Now what will happen when they are moving into the water bodies? Of course, there are various organisms. So if there are fishes and if the fish consume that pesticide, what will happen on the fertilizers? The fish will get it. And eventually if we eat the fish, what will happen? We will be consuming that particular toxin. And of course, we'll be getting a accumulation of the particular toxin, right? Easy? Yes? There will be the absorption of the toxin and of course this toxin will be getting accumulated in the water bodies and in the aquatic organisms. So, what will be happening over there? As this accumulation will be keep on happening from a plant, like a small bit of there, right? Then of course, this plant will be consumed by a hen, let's suppose. Now, if you look at the size of a hen, it's comparatively bigger, right? So, what will happen with each time these accumulation will be larger and larger because we are discussing about the size of the particular organism, right? So it has more accumulation. It will be going into the different parts of the body. And if we consume this hen, what will happen? We will have more toxin in, toxins in our, right, toxic in our body. And of course, this is something we call it as the biological magnification. It's a super, super important chapter. Yes? Very good, Yashrat. Very good. Are we clear with this? Awesome. So we have the definition of the biological magnification as a phenomena in which the concentration of the chemical toxin right, increases on each tropic level and as it moves from one level to the another tropic level, we will see the increase of these chemicals. Okay, are we clear with that? Yes. Right, everyone? Amazing. Very good. I can see your answers over there. So are we clear with biomagnification? Very good. And let's move to that how we can ensure that we are not consuming all of this. Right? Of course, that's a very important thing, right? We have the problem, but we should be looking for the solution. So what you can do, what, right, uh, not you exactly, what we can do to ensure that, that these toxins are not entering into any of the food chain. Anything, any suggestions? Uh, Fatima, we will be having that video really very soon, right? So if you look at the chapters that we have covered, we have already like, for the heredity and evolution, how do organisms reproduce? We have these critical questions, so we'll be doing that. Reduce the use of pesticide. Yeah, coming back to the solutions we have. Reducing the use of pesticides, segregation, sustainable energy, wash the food and eat, yes. Encourage organic farming, yes. Okay, now let's talk about this. So, over here we have this image, right? What do you think of this? What is exactly happening over here? Now we can see some dustbins. We can see different materials, right? And we can see this, these particular arrows. The easiest way, if we have that, we can say that we can easily avoid the movement of these toxins into the various food chain. First of all, as the from the individual point of view, is that we can definitely do the waste management, right? 
all of us actually have a lot of waste and we keep on generating the waste during our day-to-day -day activities. So if we manage our waste properly, we can definitely do something amazing for our environment. Agreed? Yes? Very good. So yeah, all of us, all of us agree on this full fact that we have to separate the waste. So let's quickly separate the waste. Based upon the classification, we have two different types of waste. We have biodegradable waste that can be easily degraded, right? That comprise of paper, clothes, and vegetables, right? Vegetable peels, remaining food. And then of course we have non-biodegradable waste. That is plastic, tin, the metal, right? We have lots of glass and the batteries. Now if you look over here, if you talk about the biodegradable waste, as you can see over here, it can, e sorry, it can easily get, <coughs> sorry, if you talk about the biodegradable waste, it can easily decompose within few days, right? So if we have some food, right? If you have some fresh uh, fruits or a food, if you keep it on a counter and if you let it, let it sit for some time, you will see the growth of the microorganism. Definitely it will stink, but yeah, it can be broken down easily, right? Now, if you think of the the other part, right, of course, you can just quickly note down this definition. Uh, this is important. And now if we quickly talk about the plastic, right, that's not the same case. It will take years and years and years. Yes? Right? Very good. Yes, everyone. So I was just looking at the chat. I hope you're clear with this, right? Very good. I think the chat got just freezed here and here. But it's okay. Yes, so we have this non biodegradable waste and we have the two different types of waste altogether. Now, if you quickly write the definition of it, non biodegradable waste cannot be decomposed by the microbial, microbial action, right? These microorganisms will not be able to work upon the plastics, right? They cannot break it down further and, of course, cannot be decomposed. And, of course, that's why we have so much of the plastic around us, right? Now, there comes a very important point of waste management with three R's, right? Again, a very, very important topic, right? A super important topic for all of us too. So I hope everyone is there with me, right? Can I have a thumbs up quickly, everyone? We are almost on the end of the session, right? But, but, but before we end, there are two important topics that we'll be discussing. So now we will be discussing about the waste management and you know what there's really something very very special for you so we have these three hours right we have reduce reuse and recycle so let's see someone talking about it and let's see what they have to say over here Tara, can you see it's me i don't know i have this thing you now there's there should be two teachers in the class right yes so let's quickly play this video the small video of me talking about that how I usually manage the waste. Hopefully this will help us to, you know, do something. Oh, it's not playing, man. We will be having some technical issue, but let's see if we can play this all. Okay, can you hear it? Is it possible for you to hear? Lagging? No, right? Be good for our health and for our environment. Apart from that, when you are going out with your parents, you can definitely carry some jute bag. Yes, so we'll, we'll do that in a while. So right, we have the three R's, right? We have the reduce, reuse, and of course, recycle. Very, very easy way, right? Very easy way, and we'll be discussing about it. Now, if we quickly talk about it, what you can reduce on a daily basis, right? What you can reduce a daily basis. Now, wait, let's do one thing now. So let's talk the about the waste management. Over here we have three hours. Starting with the first hour, that is reduced. So we should be reducing the use of plastic vessels. Okay, now let's see. Yay! So I'll play. So let's talk about the waste management. We have three hours. Starting with the first hour, that is reduced. So we should be reducing the use of plastic vessels and we should be using more of the steel ones. This is really good for our health and for our environment. Apart from that, when you are going out with your parents, you can definitely carry some jute bags or the jute bags, right? They're really very good for our environment. 
The one thing I always do is to carry my own water bottle. Now this actually saves me and the environment buying the plastics. That's really, really important. Then comes the reuse. We can definitely use these glass bottles by adding some plants into it. We can definitely color, color them and we have a good decor. Apart from that, we have these amazing jars. We can definitely add some snacks for us. Then, then let's talk, talk about the most yes. important R that is right. recycle. The most important so we have discussed about reuse, reuse, and now let's we'll start with the recycle. recycle. Whenever we think about recycling, we start with plastic. So we should be segregating the plastic separately. Then of course we have a lot of papers, and finally we should be segregating the green waste, the kitchen waste. So segregation plays a very important role in the waste management. If we are following all of these three R, we will be the heroes of our environment. So let's, let's be, be the hero, hero of our, our environment. environment. Yay! Right? So that was it. So I think we all are, are superheroes, right? And especially I think we should be the superheroes for our environment. We have to take the responsibility for our environment. Right? Yes. So you can always come back and see there is like... I think some of you were saying, ma'am, there's confusion of the videos, like the audio, yeah, I was also saying something, so yeah. Right, so these are the small practices, like, uh, see, what happens, we cannot do something very big on a single day, right? We have to take small, small steps. So these are the small steps that all of us can take for a better environment, because it's our place, right? We cannot leave Earth, like, especially in the near future. We still have to wait a long time. So let's just keep our Earth clean. Moving ahead to the three R's, we have reduced, right? As these are the things we have mentioned. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yes, one minute. <laughs> okay, so we have the reduce. This all are there. You can always come back and see this. Moving to the last topic that is really very important. It will just take two minutes for me to wind it up. Now, this is what we do for our environment. But how many of you apply sunscreen? Yeah, that was my home. How many of you apply sunscreen? Come on, come on. Two minutes, I want your attention and we will be saying bye-bye to each other. Yes. Come on, come on. Why we, why we apply sunscreen? Anyone? Oh, yes. We do that to keep ourselves safe, right? So the way we are keeping our environment safe, we can keep ourselves safe. And why just the sunscreen? Because we are going ahead with something really, very important. So we have a lot of UV rays, right? And these UV rays are not good for our health. Not me. We should, right? Yeah, I, I do that, yeah. So I would I would say that if you want to, you can use the sunscreen. It's not gender or thing. It's good for, it's kind of a protection to your skin, right? So, of course, over here we have the effects of the UV radiation. It can cause blindness, hair damage, DNA damage, causes the skin cancer. And over here we have various proofs of that. We ha It will be weakened, the immune system. Of course, it causes the aging. When we talk about this on the plants and the animal the effects of the UV radiation, same thing happens over there in the animals. And of course, when we talk about the plants, there's a decrease in the yield. And of course, there's a DNA, DNA damage in both of these plants or the animals. Yes? Now, let's quickly discuss about this. Again, now I can say that this is important. Let's quickly talk about ozone. Now, ozone is a very good layer that we have, right? And of course, it just protects us. So what we have, we have the radiation coming right directly from there and of course in our atmosphere over there top we have this oxygen right so what will happen oxygen is there as the sunrise will be striking over it we will see that we will have the molecular oxygen see over here so basically it will break the bond between the two oxygen molecules and we will have a free oxygen this free oxygen will be combining with these two oxygen molecules and of course we will have o3 our ozone this is important please note this uh, equation right over here that is important o2 and let me just write it over here for you o plus o2 will give us the o3 important important if there are your ncrt so you will remember this so we know that this will be pro the ozone layer will be protecting us from the uv radiation this is our ozone layer the blue light over here is the ozone uh, sorry the uv radiation the uv rays and it protects us Apart from that, we have the chlorofluorocarbons that are there that we use on a daily basis and that will be harming our environment. So we have to keep a check of that. Again, a very important question for two marks, right? So are we, I, I hope that you all are there with me. How does the O2 breaks into O uh, atoms? So charvi when the sun rise, right? For, 
uh, when the radiations are there, it will be breaking the bonds between the O2 molecules, right, between the two oxygen molecules, and that's uh, atoms, and that's how the, we will see the O. I hope that I clears, right? Over here, we have all of these that adds up the chlorofluorocarbon, and they actually are the one that will be damaging our environment, right, and like, especially the ozone, it will see the depletion of the ozone, and we should be very much concerned about it. We want our Earth to be protected, right? We don't want these blue radiations to come on our planet Earth. If it's there, it will be causing harm to us. Yes? So with that, everyone, we are done. It, it was a very quick session, but tomorrow again, we will have critical questions from this particular chapter. So we'll discuss about it. Over here, just showing you the summary slide. You can come back. Aram say again. You can take a screenshot of all of these, right? Cropping me off for sure. And we have all of this. So don't worry. Tomorrow when we are meeting, we will have this discussion. Now we have to wind up. And over here, we have the homework question for you. There's one teacher waiting, so I have to wind it up really very soon. Come back, look at the questions. I will be waiting for the answers and see you tomorrow. Right on that note, I think I say bye-bye. Ta-da! You got you covered. Sorry for the fast pace. But yeah, this chapter was easy. You only said that. Awesome, everyone. So with that shoot, everyone, I'll say bye-bye to you. Take care of yourself. You can try the free class, which is there in the description box below. Give, click and try. Do the homework. That's really, very important. Watch the whole session. Come back tomorrow. We'll be discussing all the questions. Bye-bye, everyone. Lots of love.